Uh, hello folks, how's it going? Hope you're all well. Um, every few months I get an email from the good people at Skylum who make the Luminar Neo editing software uh, with a big long list of all the new features of Luminar Neo. And if I'm honest, I rarely get to the bottom of it because uh, I'm just busy, other things to do. And what that means is that I end up using Luminar Neo in the same way that I always have, which is I edit in Adobe Lightroom and then I use Luminar Neo as a plugin uh, when I want to add a bit more magic to my photos, for want of a better word, which in practical terms means I open Luminar Neo with my finished photo, or finished in Lightroom at least, uh, and I just play with the mystical slider which is a very powerful tool, which seems, I think, to add some glow to the highlights while kind of maintaining contrast in places that you want contrast to be maintained. It's very clever, I love the look. Uh, but as far as my day-to-day -day use of Luminar Neo, historically, that's as far as it's gone. But recently, I got one of these emails from Skylum, and I decided to check out some of the new features, and I was very impressed. So uh, today, I thought I'd tell you about some of them and about how I think actually for a lot of the stuff that I do and perhaps for what you do, I think Luminar Neo is actually the best solution. Um, and yes, this is a, a sponsored video, so I'm not gonna mention any of the, uh, the stuff that I don't like. Obviously that's a joke. There are a couple of things I don't like and I'll, I'll talk about those too. Uh, now, if you're not familiar with this software, it came to prominence a number of years ago uh, because it could do very complicated things with a single click um, and I can demonstrate that for you now. So this is a photo that I took in Patagonia a number of weeks back. It's just a bus stop, as you can see, but uh, it was a lovely morning. And uh, Luminar can do things like sky replacements better than basically anything else I've ever seen. So watch this. It's good, isn't it? And I mean, I could go through all of these. It's just ridiculous. Uh, now, I'm not the biggest fan of replacing skies in this way in my photos, but invariably, when you have software that's this powerful, there are gonna be other applications that uh, might be more applicable for your work, or my work in this case. Uh, although also, just quickly, if you followed my work for a while, as in the last decade, you'll know that about a decade ago, uh, I was a composite photographer, uh, and I worked commercially basically taking multiple photos and blending them together to create something that didn't previously exist which uh, particularly 10 years ago required lots of hours in Photoshop. Cloning, spot healing, working with hundreds of layers, yeah. So you can imagine the bittersweet taste in my mouth when I look at power lines, like the ones in this photo for instance, and think to myself, well that, that probably would have been a, I don't know, at least a 15 minute job. You can imagine my feelings when all I need to do in this software is click remove power lines. Dan, as far as I can tell, it does a better job than I ever would have. And then obviously if I revert back to my original sky, it can just get rid of the power lines on that too. Now there are lots of clever things like this in Luminar Neo uh, that just make editing a bit quicker than other software that I've used. For example, if I go to Relight, typically if I wanted to make the foreground darker in this photo, I'd have to create a linear gradient mask and then make a change from there. But in Luminar Neo, you might not necessarily need to make a linear mask because you can just bring down brightness near and the software will make an educated guess as to what you want darkening. And then if it doesn't do the sort of job you want, you can then go to masking and create a linear gradient, but you don't have to in the first instance. And then even if you don't want to replace the sky, if you just, for instance, want this photo to look like you shot it 10 minutes earlier, then you can go to Twilight Enhancer, choose a preset, I'll stick with Mauve in this case, and then let's see what this spits out. Okay, off, on, off, on. It's very clever. Now I could make a very detailed video over the course of two or three hours where I go through all of these very powerful tools and show examples of what this software can do. But what has struck me over the past couple of weeks is that I can edit my photos faster with Luminar Neo than I can with Lightroom, even when I'm using my Lightroom presets. Uh, so let's go through a couple of examples of that. Uh, starting with this photo, which I shot here in Wales uh, last year. Now I've shot this photo in the way that I shoot most of my photos, which is to protect the highlights. Uh, as you know, if you follow my work, they don't necessarily look like that by the time I've edited them because I love my photos to be really nice and bright and I'm really not fussed about having detail in skies, for instance, unless that detail brings something to the photo. Uh, but I shoot like this to try and give myself the maximum amount 
of flexibility. Uh, that said, in this particular example, I haven't nailed that because as you can see in the highlights, uh, I do have some blown highlights. Bit ugly. Uh, now luckily, Luminar uh, has a very nice new feature to help with this, but uh, I'll come to that in a minute. For the meantime, I just wanna show you how simple it is to edit this photo to look like the original edited photo that I've put on my website and social media and whatever. Uh, so first up, we start in this develop raw tool. That's quite important that you do this before anything else. Uh, and the camera profile I'm gonna select is camera standard. And then I'm just gonna raise the shadows to bring out all of that detail. Now, and I might just bump up the highlights a touch too, because what I really wanna do is hide the fact that up here is blown out. Uh, then what I'm gonna do is go to enhance and use this accent tool, which I just think is ridiculously powerful. I don't quite understand what it does, but it just makes photos look better. That said, as you can see, I don't like what it's done with the sky up here. So I'll go to masking, I'll go to luminosity, I'll remove the sky from the selection, and there we go. Uh, next, I'll go to color, and I'll do what I typically do on my photos, which is take down the greens, bring up the yellows, that's quite nice. I could also lose some of the blue in this photo, like that. Uh, and then I'm gonna go to matte, which can make everything look quite sort of quirky and I don't know, like Instagram filter circa 2012. But when you use it with a light touch, I do really like the effect. That said, nowhere near as much as the mystical slider which if I take that all the way up, you can see it makes everything really nice and soft. Again, I'll bring it right back down, but I just like to use that a touch. Now that's taken a couple of minutes because I've been explaining myself, but that's the exact result pretty much that I would want out of Lightroom. And yet, even if I was using my presets, I'd probably end up doing more tweaking than that. When in Luminar Neo, I've started from scratch. It's very impressive. Actually, one final thing I'll do with this is I'll go into structure and just take down the structure. I think structure is basically the equivalent of clarity or texture, something like that. I like to remove some of that in most of my photos. Uh, here's another photo I shot again in Wales last year. I can show you very quickly that it's super simple and straightforward to edit this. Again, I'll go through the same process. Camera standard, I'll raise the exposure a bit. Uh, then I'll go to enhance, accent, bit of that. Uh, then I'll go down to color, I'll take out some of the green, bring up some of the yellow, bring up some of the orange, maybe not be quite that extreme on the green, down to mystical, add some of that, done. Happy with that, super fast. Now, I did mention that Luminar has uh, a feature now which can really help you uh, if you've blown out your highlights. And I've sort of realized recently that what I should be doing, particularly in scenes like that road one that I showed earlier, is I should be doing what I was doing years ago which is bracketing. Basically this, that's three photos I've just taken there, each at two stops apart from each other. Now the downside of doing that is that you're obviously capturing lots and lots of data, which with a 60 megapixel sensor means you're gonna be filling up your cards quite quick. Not really a problem for me, I'm using massive 512 gigabyte cards. But there are three upsides. The first is that you end up with three different frames. So if you've got a bird flying through your scene, then you might choose to select the photo where the bird's wings are in the best position for instance, even if that's not the best exposure. The second benefit is the uh, choice of exposures, obviously, and the third benefit is that you can combine those exposures to get lots and lots of dynamic range. So that, I could have had a photo of this road scene without a blown out sky. Now, historically, the other downside to bracketing is that if you're out for, I don't know, the whole day and you've taken thousands of photos and then you realize that you stood in the same scene for, I don't know, an hour, you've got 150 photos from that exact scene, it can be a bit of a pain to try and work out which three photos belong to each other. Is it that three, that three, that three? Which of those do I combine? Bit of a faff, really, but not so with Luminar Neo now because there is a very clever HDR merge tool. So if you look at this, I'll select a load of photos and then I'll drag them into this HDR merge. And then all the photos in threes that should be grouped together, get grouped together. And I don't know how it does it. I don't know if it's monitoring each pixel to work out which photo should be next to which photo. Maybe it's using the clock in the camera. I'm not exactly sure. But it basically means bracketing or dealing with bracketing in post-processing becomes child play. And that 
is a game changer on its own. Uh, and yeah, basically all of this means that I now think Luminar Neo is probably the best all-in-one editing solution for most photographers. Uh, and it's cheaper than Photoshop and Lightroom, particularly at the moment because there's currently 83% off at the time I've released this video. And if you use the code JAMES10 at checkout, you'll get a further 10% off. So yeah, whether you're into sky replacements or not, whether you're into AI or not, and whether you think you'd like to use this as a standalone program or just as a plugin for Lightroom, I really think it's a powerful tool for lots of us outdoor photographers. Right, I'm off to go and pack. I'm, uh, I'm going to Ireland tomorrow for a very exciting trip where I think I'll be bracketing. But I'll see you then. Cheers. There's a, uh, there's a shipwreck out there. I think I'll have to get the drone out at some point. No, anyway, welcome to Ireland, everybody. Uh, I realised that I hadn't told you what I don't like about Luminar Neo, and it's one thing, really, which is that when you make an edit uh, in any of the tools, if you then go to another tool to make a different edit, but then go back to your original tool, your edit, or the slider, uh, is reset. It's not where you left it. It has moved uh, to the edits panel, which in a program that seems to be flawlessly built for speed, um, I think that's slower. And maybe I just need to get used to it, but uh, yeah, I, I think I'd prefer my edits or my sliders to be where I'd left them. Uh, but yeah, other than that, fantastic program. And I know that other programs are integrating AI lots now, Photoshop included, but uh, yeah, the one clickability of Luminar Neo I think is fantastic, and I don't think that's a word. But basically I feel like the engineers have asked consistently, how can photographers do this job more quickly, regardless of what the job is? Anyway, yeah, link in the description, and uh, next week I'll, I'll probably include a drone shot of that shipwreck.